I am tired as fuck, so if I ramble in this video, I'm sorry. Also, this, all my clothes are dirty, and my work has a no YouTube policy or online video thing, because, you know, multi-million company probably doesn't want to be associated with someone who says faggot for a laugh. <laughs> no, but seriously though, FCC, net neutrality destruction, let's talk about it. So let's just start with what is net neutrality? Basically, stop some, some company like the FCC from interfering with internet connections and shit and stops them from having to charge for being able to charge for certain sites to have a unhindered connection or just a connection at all. Fairly simple. So with the removal of it they can basically charge the websites themselves in order to get them them onto their broadband plans like let's say in England there's like Sky Broadband, BT Broadband I think there's no Free Viewers TV again I'm tired sorry there's oh what is it Virgin Mobile? No that's Mobile see I oh, know let's just say BT and Sky for example they have different plans and they can basically pay different companies and shit. Some can go, hey, we might want to pr promote this thing and hinder this thing for our customers. So we'll offer this site for a fee, of course, to get promoted. Or just promote their own sites for free. So, you know, if, say, Google wanted to do anything, they could just, well, make their sites run fast and shit. And, well, well, there's two things really. They could either interfere with the connections to make it run faster or slower, or they can just whitelist and blacklist in any way and just make people pay to get into their whitelist or pay in order to access the blacklist or whatever. They're basically, it's fees. And the thing that is so destructive about it is because of fees when the majority of the internet is built upon a free model. Why do we use Twitter? Because it's a paid service? Fuck no. Would we use Facebook if it was paid? Obviously not. Those sites are fucking shit. The only reason why so many people use them is because it's free. Because there are so many other options. If you wanted to message someone else, you could just a text message them. So if you needed to pay for another messenger, you just wouldn't use that messenger. It's retarded. So... The FCC making you pay for things, like, you know, YouTube, maybe people would pay for that because, well, that's where the majority of the entertainment is. But competitors like VidMe, fuck no, they're dead. And then, of course, just the freeloaders and even words. And paid services will be entirely fine because you have to pay for them anyway. And the smart ones will reduce their fee in order to e equal it out or look more competitive. So it's like, oh cool, Netflix costs just as much. Why don't I just keep using my Netflix now that I need to pay for YouTube? Or hell exploit here you know app stores like android droids yeah android's apple play store not apple google the apple app store or the microsoft 
just game store, app store, whatever. Yeah, all of them have their app shops, whatever. But the apps are already regulated, and many websites have a application version. So for mobile users, the FCC is virtually well, it doesn't affect them because the applications are already regulated by Apple, by Google. The companies have to pay a fee in order to get their thing on the app, on the app stores and any purchases go through them. So, you know, unless it's like in-app, you know, like the only good games really like the like cat attack well why am i saying that i haven't actually paid any apps but you know stuff like that really you they pay royalties they pay a fee to even get onto there they go through the checks and shit it's basically what the FCC wants to do with the internet so if you're worried about not being able to afford websites and shit just install the application version of that site there and if you don't live in America we're all safe right? no because as I said before how websites make their money like sure a lot not more people are using phones and that is only going to increase but at the end of the day there will always be be computer users or people using tablets or shit like that like hell max whoever buys a mac my god like i mean just buy a pre-built pc most editing programs like Sony Vegas have a similar layout anyway at least in terms of the basics like I mean all the cutting things and that are very simple to learn if you have an interest in editing but that's kind of a sidetrack on people who are scared to go away from Apple like, like why don't you just install an Apple iOS BIOS rather into a not overpriced PC <laughs> you know a not overpriced computer Mac is my Apple computer or whatever yeah but that's a little tangent back to net neutrality's destruction so yeah because broadband plans would require more payments in order to get access to sites and that or to not have them blacklisted or you know just that shit really like there's a lower plan which is just like alright here's the internet so you can use your phone or your consoles that shit here's this higher plan which allows you to get to the big sites like you're able to access YouTube, you're at to Amazon, to basically the very big ones. You can access the Twitters, the Facebooks, but you're probably not going to find Fur Affinity. And then, of course, there's a even higher plan, which is like, all right. Google search. You have to pay shit ton of money just to be able to have the to use the internet like it wasn't under net neutrality. So now you're just paying a lot more money for something that you could have got with just your normal router or even your phone data, which is shit. Let's be honest. So yeah, there's that. And because of that, less people are going to be paying the, to use the internet as much. So the sites that rely upon selling your information for adverts, let's be fucking honest. Like 
Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I use the same examples, but let's be honest. Most YouTubers use Twitter and most people have Facebook for in real life contacts. So, there's just that. And, yeah. Now, of course, it's not going to go into effect immediately. Again, they need to get it repealed in order to even arrange anything like that. Because, well, if they started arranging illegal things, that could have got them in trouble. So they need to make it legal first. Though you might not want to do that if you're gonna gonna be neglectful over the fact that there are 2 million fraudulent lint volts that were put towards that were put in your attention by multiple attorneys sent directly to your head office so you would know and you know mass identity theft because the fake ballots used their names Tom Scott made a video back back in 2014 on the computer file channel about why electronic voting is bad and one of them is just fake ballots in general and I'll look 2 million fake ballots on a vote that was purely online because it was an internet thing like hackers but of course FCC won when most people don't want the FCC to win because it means that it's more money for them for literally no extra service so you know I'm not saying the FCC broke the law but I'm saying that that there was negligence on their part because they were alerted about it to the point that there were multiple online articles about it, I'll leave them in the description and as well as the Tom Scott video and you know it's just it leaves a bad taste in your mouth knowing that they still went along even after they knew about the mass identity theft in order to create mass fraud or mass whatever it's negligence on their part and you know if any website that doesn't want to get mass fees or you know have their entire advertising infrastructure infrastructure destroyed by by companies basically blacklisting their site behind the paywall when their entire stick is having the paywall later in their Facebook games you know you you could always sue them for that like you could always say hey they were alerted about the two million fraudulent votes and didn't do anything about it that's neglect <laughs> or something like that. I'm not a law expert but it there is definitely something illegal about that so yeah just yeah really <laughs> so any site that has a large amount of funds that doesn't want to lose them might be the time to fucking sue FCC or any well just FCC really because, well, who else are they going to sue? But yeah, it's just like that. <sighs> so, in conclusion, use phone apps because they're already gated off by your application, by your, by your phone's OS, BIOS, whatever you want to call, because they have their own app stores, which gate off access to certain features whether or not you have them so that's something so people panicking that they're gonna lose all of their contacts buy a phone even if it's a cheap one install 
your preferred social media sites on there as applications and if you don't have enough memory memory get the factory versions how a lot of phones come with just the basics like when I got my UTC phone I think it was a UTC 500 or whatever it came with Twitter, it came with Facebook, it came with G+, it came with Internet Explorer no, it used a basic phone browser it came with Google Chrome, it came with Google Search why is there three fucking search engines in the same fucking phone? it came with the Play Store, it came with the Play Store Music and Play Store Movies, Play Store Books Basically, it was just everything Google, and then with Apple, you get iTunes, the App Store, you know, you get my point. You already... Phones are already at the point that the FCC wants, it's just, just unlike with phones where the companies have to pay the phone providers, it's you who need to pay them and that has a negative effect on many websites because their entire stick is being free and selling your information off to advertisers so yeah let's see how many days YouTube survives and let's see if there is any any competitors at all and also if they can just entirely blacklist sites that means that there's no watch cartoon series online even though that already got blocked in my country using it for Samurai Jack I already had the DVD it was region locked I can change the region on my computer but the disk drive is stuck so I can't fucking do anything with that so yeah. <sighs> I'm sorry to anyone who likes browsing the internet on their computer. I feel sorry for anyone who just liked using Google in general. And I won't be surprised if Facebook or Google or literally any website which has a large amount of money behind it ends up suing the FCC for negligence about the about being alerted of the mass fraud and not doing anything about it because it ended up benefiting them and you know the FCC has the funds to pull something up like that off on such a large scale like two million and you know it would be, have access to people's names and shit and you know yeah you could call this just accusations like what's the the word like fraud no no oh what is it uh false allegations was that uh libel that's it like, what I'm saying could be libelous, but it's like... Well, this is the internet now. Guilty until proven innocent. That's how things work on YouTube. I'm just following YouTube's system, really. So... <laughs> no, but seriously, I wouldn't be surprised if in a couple months' time it gets revealed that the false emails had been tracked back to the FCC. If they haven't, then that's a big shock. But if it was from, like, Comcast or something like that, I also wouldn't be surprised. You know, because, you know, no hacker is gonna go, hmm, let's make, let's make the internet cost more for myself. Anyone who would have the tools to be able to do that 
probably wants the internet to be as cheap as possible. Unless they're benefiting from it. Literally humans are selfish. Not selfish. Selfish. I think I said it right. I'm tired. But, you know, humans are selfish. It's just... If something benefits them, they're going to find a way to fucking do it. So, moral of the story, don't do voting online. Just have it on paper. I know it's an internet thing, so it makes sense to do it on the internet. But hackers are a serious concern anyway. Like, I mean... If you want the FCC to have a fair chance, just do it on paper so, you know, some hackers can't just just hack into other people's computers and then just basically keep sending different people's information over there for Moonpig. <laughs> uh, I've been on a Tom Scott kick recently, so expect techie jokes. No, but anyway, I think this video has gone on long enough. I hope anyone living in America is fine. The It definitely won't have been put into action because, again, planning for something that is currently illegal at the time sounds a little bit illegal. I know. Like, I mean... I mean, you aren't gonna murder someone, but you set up a death trap for them. Something doesn't sound right about that, and especially while you're trying to push a law that allows, that creates a loophole for you to do that thing. Because, let's be honest, companies have a lot of power inside of the government because bribes there's a reason why I don't care about politics, and if you moan at me for not voting, then I ask you, why should I vote if, pe if the politicians don't care about millennials and give me a different minimum wage when I do the exact same work? Simple answer, well, if you vote for them, they'll benefit you. Um, no, because they know that my vote is in the bag. So they need to earn my vote, but my my group doesn't vote at all, so they're not gonna bother. Oh, it's a loop. Maybe I should go with the low effort solution, which means that I can stick the middle finger at them. At least in my own way that they really don't care about because it's what they expected. They don't care about us. They just care about their own self-interest and one of their interests is getting elected into a higher paying position. So anything to keep people happy to keep getting them re-elected. So, yeah, that's something. <laughs> what the fuck is this video? Oh yeah, it's me ranting about the FCC. It can go fuck itself because it's greedy as hell, even though it doesn't directly affect me. The domino effect it will have imposing fees on a free-to-play system, essentially, is gonna be disastrous. Patreon will most certainly survive. I'm not sure about YouTube, though. 